What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April. So it is time for Real Talk Wednesday as you guys already know. So before you guys even ask, the hair that I'm still rocking is the hair from Lily Hair Beauty. I do have a video on my channel. You know I'm always forgetful. So if I forget to put the link, just check out my videos on my channel. So anyway, any hoot to the hoot. Um, other than that, there's really nothing much I really have to tell anybody. Um, it's been actually a really, really super duper easy week for me. I've just been getting some Christmas shopping done. I hope you guys are doing the same because that will be here like just like that before you guys know it. Um, and just doing a lot of wig videos and just videos in general. Um, there's really no tea in my life. Um, not that I know of. I'm just pretty darn upset because this coming Sunday, for those of you guys who are Walking Dead fans, this is the semi or mid, the mid season finale. Okay. So it doesn't come back on, I think until like February, which really does suck because first of all, we wait like, I think it's like what, nine months, seven months, eight months, something like that for the next season to come on. And then we have to go mid-season. I mean, the season has been really good. It has been also a good start. But I hate waiting. Like, it seems like every show that I actually like to watch on television, it doesn't have, like, a bunch of seasons to it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you guys ever recall, remember the show called Lost that used to come on TV? I love that show. It would air for like about three months and then it would go off and I would have to wait nine months for the next season to come on. And I was like ecstatic about that show. I loved it. Don't say nothing to me. Don't talk to me on that date. I feel the same way about The Walking Dead. I followed every season and watched it religiously. So, you know, I feel the same way about The Walking Dead. This is like my show. And I really wish like, okay, so maybe Fear the Walking Dead will come on in the mist to take its place, but who knows? It may or may not. I'm kind of into that show as well now. So yes, for you guys who love The Walking Dead, let me know below what you guys think about the season so far. Sunday was a really good episode. It seems like they're doing a lot more of the 90 minute episodes, um, which is awesome because I really think the show should be longer than an hour and as much as I hate Negan he's really really like he is easy on the eyes okay let's just admit he is a bad guy but he is handsome as ever so yes and other than that, um, that's just about it. I really don't watch too many different TV shows. I really haven't been doing anything much lately. I do um I haven't been at back to the gym in a minute just because of my surgery. So I probably, I was supposed to go back on Monday, but I didn't get around to it because my son who is 18, he had a seizure. So I'm making sure that he's okay. And, um, other than that, uh, my life is just normal, you know? Um, yeah, family comes first. So, you know, but I've been kind of doing good with the eating habits and I'm losing weight. seems like when I'm not at the gym, I can lose weight. But then when I go to the gym and work out, I just don't lose the weight. I don't really get it. I'm not really sure why, but either way, here nor there, that's about it. So today's episode or whatever, real talk, I'm going to get to three today. So I don't want to string you guys along for too long. But if you do have a real talk that you would like for me to discuss on my channel, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk so that I know it is a real talk. And as well as that, if you want to change the characters, the people's name in your email, please let me know in the beginning of the email. So that way I don't have to think of anything because, um, let me tell you something. I may not be a true blonde, but sometimes I do have my moments. Okay. Hmm. So on that note, let's get on to this real talk, you guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember my email password, so I'm using my friend's phone. Either the here nor there. Hi, April. I've been watching your videos for a long time, and who here is the 411? Anywho, here is the 411. My name is... <clears throat> I don't think she changed her name, so... My name is Felicia. I'm 28 years old, and I'm fucking sick of filing my taxes as single head of household. I've been dating this guy, Anthony, for 10 years. I love him so much, but I feel like 
he doesn't care as much for me since he hasn't attempted to purpose or even move in with me. And each time I bring up the idea of living together, he simply shuts me down and says he isn't ready to take that step just yet. I really don't get it. He says he loves me so much, but can't seem to even work to even furnish a promise ring or anything. This man works an amazing, um, uh, this man works an amazing job. So I know finances aren't the issue. I don't know what to do. This guy was my first everything kiss sexual partner. And he stood shoulder to shoulder with me at my mother's funeral five years ago. He helped me get out of my depression after her death. I'm just writing because I don't get why he won't commit. What could be the issue? I'm a woman, so naturally I have dreams of my wedding day, but it's looking like I need to hang it up since I may never get a ring in this lifetime. Ooh, bye, Felicia. Mm, bye, Felicia. So, Felicia is, yeah, you guys already know. She's been with, we're going to call him a Fernando. Uh, um, well, she, I already said his name, Anthony in the video, but by Anthony. Okay. So she's been dating Anthony for 10 years and she ain't got no promise ring, no engagement ring. The nigga don't even want to move in. Every time she speaks about it, he shuts her down, basically changed the subjects. Okay. Yeah. It's raining outside girl. What? Oh, when we going to move in together and when we going to get engaged? Oh yeah. I know that tornado is about to hit this house. We better get to step in. Okay, but they've been together for 10 years and he is her first everything, okay? Meaning kids, sexual partner, everything. Been side by side, shoulder to shoulder with her when her mom passed. Got her out of depression, but he ain't ready for the next step. Then what the fuck is you ready for, dude? Death? I mean, because really, it ain't that hard to commit to somebody. If you've been with somebody for 10 freaking years, what is the issue? You know what I'm saying? I'm Me personally... Um, I don't, I don't really get what the promise ring is all about. You know what I'm saying? Because I've never had anybody, well, I haven't been engaged that many times, but twice, but I have never been offered a promise ring. Okay. So I'm not really sure what the freak is this prom promise ring all about. What is this? Like I promise to marry you or I promise to engage to you. Like, listen, I don't, I don't really want a promise ring. Don't promise me shit. Okay. You either going to do it or you ain't going to do it. Don't promise me to do something. Or is it because the person can't afford it? I'm, I've never looked up the meaning of a promise ring because when I hear people speak of it, the whole reason why they're speaking of it is because they haven't gotten engaged yet. So to me, it's like, okay, well, listen, um, I've been with you for X, Y, Z amount of years and you ain't giving me no promise ring. Fuck that nigga. You ain't married me yet. I'm just saying, I'm just saying 10 years is an awful long time to be with somebody and they're not even popping a question. That nigga ain't even trying to move in with your ass. Okay. Does he spend the night over your house often to where y'all feel like a couple? I'm trying to figure old boy out. Me personally, I would have gotten dead tired after 10 years. But me personally now, I wouldn't want a motherfucker moving in with me if you paid me to live with me. Okay? That's just how I feel. And it's maybe because I've been through enough, been there, done that. Listen, I need my fucking space. You can live on the other side of town. A bitch like me going to stay right here. And when you want to come over, let me know. Don't just pop up at my motherfucking door. Call me and I'll see if I can make arrangements in my schedule to fit your ass the fuck in. But other than that, we don't need to live together. But that's just me because I've had a relationship relationships. I've had baby fathers, drama, or not even baby father drama, but I've got baby fathers. I've been married, been divorced, kicked somebody out my motherfucking house. So it's like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to live with nobody. I'm set in my ways. It's set in stone how the fuck I am. And it is what it is, but that has to do with what I've been through. However, for those who haven't been through what I have been through and are still in the same relationship with that same person after 10 years, you truly do feel totally different. And I can understand your frustration. Me, my honest feelings, if that were I, I probably would feel like, are you living a double life? Because what's so hard about wanting to share a household together, wanting to share bills together, wanting to share furniture, dinner, you know what I'm saying? Wake up with one another. We've been together for 10 years. What is the issue? And if you constantly are pushing it out the door, like changing the subject when I bring it up, then honestly, maybe you really don't care for me that much. Maybe I'm not the Marian type. And if that's the case, let's just be adults about it. Let's just keep it real and talk about this. So that way I don't have to waste any more time 
with you and I can carry on with my life. It's so frustrating when you just don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to feel like that person really cares about you and that that person is really going to be there for you and they want the same things in life that you do, especially if you've been together for so long. But then it's the thought of the not knowing, like obviously you don't really know because every time he brings it up, every time you bring it up, excuse me, he's changing the subject. And if your feelings are in it to win it, but his isn't, then listen, you can't keep at this race because obviously, bitch, that nigga is not really interested. He may be somewhat interested, but there are some people like myself who just don't want to be living with someone or married anymore. And it may not have to do with he don't want to be in a committed relationship. He may just be committed to you and he may not just have another girlfriend on the side. He may just be living the lifestyle that you think he's living where it's just you and he, but he doesn't want to live in the same household with you or get married. Some people are afraid of all of that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes men are afraid of that because when they take that step into marriage or living with an, a woman, that's like their grown up stage. And some just don't want to realize and face reality that we are grown ups, and this is what we got to do. And then there are those who, listen, I'm going to play this bitch for as long as I can because I'm going to be a gigolo behind closed doors and ain't nobody going to know that I got several bitches, okay? Like, my question to you is, are you able to go over to his house unannounced? You know what I'm saying? Do you spend the night over his house or he does he spend the night over your house the most? If the nigga is spending the night over your house um, six, seven times out of 10, then bitch, there's an issue. And there's a reason why he don't want you at his house. And he don't want to give you that so-called promise ring that you asking for. I don't know about y'all, but that whole promise ring bullshit, can somebody please explain it to me? I mean, by the time this video goes up, I will have already known what a fucking promise ring is. But my thing is this, um, I don't need a promise ring. You either going to do it or don't. And if you got a promise to me to make a commitment, then nigga, I don't need to be bothered with you. 10 years is a long time. And then it isn't long because I've seen people who have been married for 50 and 60 years. Now that's what we call it a long fucking time. However, to be in a relationship and not even live with one another is a long time. Maybe it's his moral values. Maybe it's his religious values. Who even knows? But if he ain't telling you no answer and he ain't giving you no answer and he keeps pushing you off and changing the subject, then there's something more to it than you just don't get. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is this. You need to come to him. Some people say with an ultimatum. Some people will say, listen, dude. It don't even have to be an ultimatum. I'm not going to force you because to me, an ultimatum is like more or less forcing someone to do something that they really don't want to do. Like, you're either going to do this or you're going to do this or this is going to happen. Like, nah, fuck that. I'm not going to give you an ultimatum. This is what I'm going to to tell you and if you can't respect that then bye fernando okay instead of felicia bye fernando and if you can respect then we can get to going but if you can't then okay you know what let me get my shit together put on my big girl panties and keep it moving you know what i'm saying no such thing as an ultimatum with me because i'm not i'm not about to force you into anything we don't do that we're grown-ups you either going to listen to me and we're going to talk about this and we're going to resolve this as adults or we're just going to leave each other the fuck alone. So you ready to pack it up or hang it up? You know what? I can totally agree with you. A part of me feels like, okay, maybe this nigga is living another lifestyle. Maybe he, maybe he got some girls on the side that he been with not just as long, but just as long. You know what I'm saying? Either way, here nor there, my opinion is my opinion. My advice is how I feel. You cannot take it so literal like, oh, you know what? I'm breaking up with you today because April said so. Just got to think about what I'm saying and put it in perspective. And what everybody else comments down below about Felicia, read it. But think rational. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we think with our hearts and not with our minds. And some people think with their hearts because they just don't want to go through some shit. But let me tell you something. I've been through enough relationships. And every time that I've been hurt, I've always cried. And I've made being upset and hurt. And not even depressed, but down about it for a minute. But you know what? Over time, sometimes that time goes by real quick. I forget. It's not that I forget about the person, but I get over it and I continue on with my life. You know what I'm saying? So heartbreak is a hurtful thing, especially if you've been with someone for so long. Take me, for example, my ex-husband. I was with him for 18, 17, 18 years for a long time. And now we, we don't speak, but he writes letters to the kids because he likes for them to read. You know what I'm saying? And he wrote a letter. I got one yesterday and he wrote to me in the letter and said, 
how he didn't write to me exactly, but he was telling our daughter, the 14 year old, how he felt about me as a person and how I was the best thing that ever, you know, basically yada, yada, yada. But I don't even remember where I was going with this, but Oh yes, just take me for example. With him, you know, we have had our moments where we have broken up and I felt like it was the end of the world and I got over it, you know what I'm saying? And then we got back together again and then we broke up again and it wasn't even like really a breakup. I kicked his fucking ass out, but still in all, I was hurt and I was depressed and I was down about it and I got over it. Eventually I did get over it and just like with us now, I was hurt and I divorced him and I moved on with my life and I guess that was like the final straw for me with the divorce so I wasn't really hurt I was really happy about the divorce thing but you know that's either here nor there but you always have to keep in mind like there is always something on the other side of the green of the window or the rainbow or whatever don't stagnate yourself with one person because that one person may be your all because that's all you ever had that's your first and that's all you know unfortunately and fortunately for you that's a great thing that's all you know but don't put all your eggs in one basket girlfriend no sweetheart you might be he might be your all but you might not be his all so just think about what i'm saying and and just just think about it and read the comments below and you guys let felicia know what your feelings and take is on this me personally i'm sorry but i ain't about to be fucking waiting for nobody for 10 years okay mm, i don't know what the promise ring is okay so here we go with another one Hello, my fellow Gemini. Girl, you are the truth. Hmm, you ain't have to tell me that. You are my sister in my head. Laugh out loud. This is in response to the Real Talk video, The Fuckery Never Stops. Okay, so that was like a couple of weeks ago. The young lady with the Muslim boyfriend. I say love is a beautiful thing, and I say fight for it if it's worth it to you. And that's the same thing I said. Now, for my situation, my own situation, you can call me Kimberly, and you can call him David. I was recently married and my husband is a single father with six children. Three are out of the house, grown, and three are at home. I have no biological children, but I love his children all the same. The problem is that I knew the mother of the children before she passed away. We lived in the same apartment building. She was actually my friend. She was the one who saw me on the news when my apartment burned down and called a mutual friend to tell me that an apartment was available in her building. I had a friendship with her and her children. I would take the children to eat and to the movies when she couldn't. She was sick and she had lost and lost her mother. Sad to say, she died a year after her mother died. I believe that she died of a broken heart. Aww. My mother died when I was young and we would talk about the loss of our mothers and I would offer her the best advice I could. I was not friends with the father of her children, but after she passed away, I maintained a relationship with her children and because of that, I got to know their father. It turns out that he is an incredible man and we have so much in common. I wasn't looking for love. In fact, I had my own man. So fast forward four years later, we are now married. His mother hates me and so does his sister. Both of them miss the wedding because they think I'm not a good friend to my friend that passed away. What's crazy is they didn't like her at all. We'll call her out of her name in front of the children the whole nine yards. My issues is why didn't they support David? Why are they letting the pettiness and bitterness stop them from enjoying the fact that David and the children are happy? Anyway, I believe that God brought me to this family because they needed me and I needed them. People are sitting in judgment telling me that I broke the girl code and that I'm scandalous. At first it bothered me, but now I don't give a damn what they think. What are your thoughts, April? Even if you just respond in an email, that would be awesome. Wow. So let me tell you guys. Let me tell you. As I was reading this, I was getting chills. You know what I'm saying? Because... I felt the love and when she said God put her in these children's lives for a reason because they needed her and she needed them, I was about to start tearing up because I totally, totally believe the same thing and I agree. Let me tell you something, okay? First of all, Kimberly. Now, so Kimberly and David have been, or just are married. He has six children, three are grown out of the household. Funny thing is, like, the mother of his children was her friend's. 
her friends. She would take her kids out, etc., etc. You guys heard the whole story. I don't really need to explain that. But here's the issue with David's mother and David's sister. They don't like her. They're talking shit, talking about she's scandalous because she broke the girl code. She's messing with old girls, man, etc., etc. First of all, now let me let, let's just say this. Kimberly's friend who passed away, she passed away. And there was no ill-mannered intentions of getting with the guy in the first place. So they need to realize that. But what they really mainly need to realize is they need to mind their motherfucking business, okay? That's the number one key. Mind your business. Now, if you got more than the mother and the sister calling you scandalous and you broke the girl code, tell them bitches to kiss your ass because from what I'm reading and from what I'm seeing, I don't think you broke any code, okay? These children knew you. They already was familiar with you. You've already had a relationship with them, okay? What is the best thing in the world for these children, okay? They already know who you are. So it's not like David is bringing some strange fucking thoughty thought around his children that maybe don't even like his children. I think what you and your family, your husband has is a beautiful thing. And like you said... They needed you and you needed them. They already needed you when their mother was sick. And unfortunately, she passed away. But at least you were there prior to her passing away. And at least you were friends with her. And you was already familiar and friends with her children. So, it's not like you yourself put her in the grave. Or you yourself were having all kind of ill intentions of getting with her, man. Things happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And I... Personally, if it were me in the grave, I personally would be happy that my children are with someone that already genuinely love them as who they are. You know what I'm saying? Fuck his mother and fuck his sister. Them bitches, let me tell y'all something. I used to go through the same bullshit with my ex-husband. His mother and his sister, they didn't like me for shit. They didn't like me because I already had kids before him. Who gives a fuck? He had kids before me. So, um hello but they just didn't like me for a lot of different reasons because for one i already had kids before them but two for two i was i'm like i said i was about to say i was light-skinned like i changed a different color but I, because i'm light-skinned you know what i'm saying they didn't like me for that for three you know she has his mother has three kids two of them are girls and he's the only boy so she felt like i took away their son you know what i'm saying so it, it was all those reasons and at first for the longest for a very very long time i used to just get so heartbroken broken and hurt like why are they always so disrespectful to me why are they always saying it's not little remarks and I would just bite my tongue because that's his mother and you say shit but it came to the point one day when my ex went to jail and his mother and sister came over there to start some bullshit me and my own mama we had to go blow for blow with them and I've told you guys this several times and quite a few of my real talks you know what I'm saying about his family so they didn't like me and to this day them bitches still don't fucking like me but you know what after that this fight there's no holes bars like bitch i wish you would say something to me i don't give a fuck whose mother you are just remember at the end of the day or any given fucking day i'm somebody's mother too so if you think you can talk to me like that because i'm grown a bitch i'm gonna talk to your old ugly ass the same motherfucking way and that's just how it is you know what i'm saying so if his mother want to be disrespectful and his sister want to be disrespectful sweetheart honey child let me tell you something they may not be your biological children but they're your children and you take care of them and you help raise them and they are who they you are who they know and you are there for them but i will tell you this much there is a very thin line like i say between respect and disrespect and i ain't about to let nobody i don't give a fuck who the fuck you are disrespect me okay i don't care if that's your son your grandchildren your motherfucking donkey your dog your cat your mule bitch you not about to disrespect me on any fucking given day of this week or week of this fucking month or month of this year it ain't about to happen a lot of times what these females think or family members think that they can disrespect you or they can say snide remarks because they feel like you're an outcast you're already not really related and you they feel sometimes like you're not going to say anything because you don't want to get involved or you don't want to have a dispute with your spouse okay or they feel like you know they just feel i don't understand why women do shit like that because that's not me i don't do that i just stay out of my kids relationship but there are a lot of people feel like this a lot of women and sisters they feel like this me personally 
And from what I've been through, Kimberly, I wouldn't let neither one of them fucking bitches disrespect me, okay? Neither one of them. If they want to call you scandalous and you broke the girl code, you need to let them know. First of all, bitches, the ones who are scandalous are y'all too. Y'all was the ones talking about her before she even passed away in front of the children. And here you want to come around talking shit about me and I'm taking care of them and I knew them way before she passed away. Girl, please go have a seat far in the back of the motherfucking crowd and sit your ass down and shut the fuck up up okay sometimes you know what i've noticed because this is the situation that i was put in they would always say some smart ass remarks and i would just be like i would basically kind of like blow it off and then i would say things but as long as you allow them bitches to continuously say shit to you and you don't say nothing back they gonna feel like they have the authority the upper power over you to say whatever they want to say once I sat, once I put my foot down and bust his mother upside her motherfucking mouth and my mother hit his sister, them bitches, yeah, they did say some smart shit still, but they watched how they came. They still was mouthing off, but here's the thing. You want to be mouthing off through the phone? Okay, that's cool, bitch. Mouth off through the motherfucking phone because I could care less. I give two fucks about that shit but i bet you bitches won't ring my motherfucking doorbell again and ate something in a goddamn more ready to pop off and didn't know my mama was up from new york city visiting upstate new york did not know that okay talking shit over the phone then came to my house banging and ringing on my doorbell okay you know what I'm saying? And I got, they got the surprise of a lifetime. This It's just dysfunctional. You know what I'm saying? It's unfortunate you got to be involved with people that are so fucking dysfunctional. But sometimes, sometimes you got to lower your standards and your character just to put them in their place, which is so sad and so unfortunate. But until you do, they're just going to keep on running off at the mouth. So some women like myself, I will just, rah, 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 I, will, I will flip out and spaz out. But some women... Like me today, I will let you have it in a nice tone like right now and let you know, listen, this is my husband and I'm taking care of these children because they're my children and I love them. And I would suggest you and you have a seat somewhere in the back of the crowd and mind your business and please shut up because I don't need your advice. I don't need you to give me any of your opinions. I could care less and watch what you say about me because I don't need the disrespect and I don't want to have to come back at you and say anything else. And you give them that look. That's what I do. When I when I when I confront somebody and I say what I have to say, I'm done. And then I'm like this. That means you got something to say. <laughs> I bet you you don't. And if you do, then it's gonna be an issue because I'm not about to let you get another word out of your motherfucking mouth. You gotta let bitches have it. And it's unfortunate that that's your husband's family, but. Like my ex used to say, I'm going I'm to say something to him about it. I'm going to say something to him about it. But apparently what he was saying to them about it wasn't, it, they didn't really take it serious. They didn't really give a fuck. And it seems like the same situation is happening with you. He may be saying something about it, but them bitches don't give a fuck just like with mine. They ignorant and catty, okay? So he can say something until he's blue in the face. They're going to continue because they already know, regardless of what he tells them, he's still going to love them because that is his immediate family. Now, the person that's going to have to say something, it's going to be you. To allow the bullying to stop because that's what the fuck it is, you're going to have to stand on your own two feet and stop worrying about how he's going to feel about the disrespect that you're about to lash out at his mom and his sister. Because if he really was too concerned, then you wouldn't have to be writing and emailing me about the bullshit, okay? So, in my opinion, I think that what you're doing is a wonderful thing, and it's a beautiful thing. And, girl, please, you ain't break no fucking girl code. It ain't, you know what I'm saying? Some bitches really don't get what girl code the fuck is. You know what I'm saying? This is not a girl code situation at all. Anyway, you guys let Kimberly know what your feelings and your take is on this story and situation. All right, okay. my love, so this is going to be the last one of the day. Hey, girl, I love your videos. You can call me Melanie. I'm in a situation, and I just want your opinion on it. My ex and I have two kids, ages 7 and 5. Okay, my ex and I co-parent. I'm married, and he has a girlfriend. My ex's girlfriend is one of those tired, late, extremely bothered, beanbag, badly built bitches that has a problem for every solution. 
She has been interfering with our parenting, our kids, since 2013. Okay. <laughs> he allows it, and I had to finally take him to court because it got too bad. They told him that she is not to be contacting me at all. Court was in May of this year. Things were good until November because they broke up. They got back together and his girlfriend is back at it with harassing me. I'm fed up. We're going back to court. She wants me out of the picture completely. Even says she tells my kids she's their mother. She's extremely insecure because my ex still has feelings for me that he's made known. I'm fed up completely. I just want your opinion on this. Thanks in advance. Okay, so first of all, Melanie, did she just say she is one of those tired, late, extremely bothered, bean bag, badly built bitches? I have never heard that, okay? But I tell you what, if a bitch say some smart shit out of their face to me, that's what the fuck I'm gonna say. I'm, I'm gonna hopefully remember and say this shit. So, Melanie's ex and her have two children together, seven and five, and so Melanie's ex, we gonna call him Michael, got a girlfriend who basically wants Melanie out of the picture, always starting up shit. Melanie had to take her ex-boyfriend, baby father, to court because he's allowing his girlfriend to dictate his relationship with his children and her co their co-parenting, okay? Since May to November, everything was breezy because they were not together. But now that they're back, this bitch, the um the 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 bitch wants nothing to do with Melanie. She don't want anything. Melanie in the lives of them. She wants she just basically don't want Melanie interfering in anything, telling her children that she is their mother, harassing her, all kind of shit. What would I do? Hmm. Or, or she want my opinion? Okay. Well, it wouldn't be too ladylike an adult to say beat the bitch ass. But, um, because sometimes beating the bitch ass just don't solve nothing. You know what I'm saying? You get yourself into some extra bullshit. You know, so all the drama shit is not even necessary, you know. But here's the thing. So you're dealing with somebody. She's, because you ain't really dealing with him. You're dealing with her because this is the bitch. But you're dealing with somebody who's constantly harassing you and talking shit and then telling your kids shit. How about you just take her ass to motherfucking court? What I would do because she's harassing you. You don't have to go back to court for this bullshit with him, but what I would do, because I'm sorry, I'm not about to let nobody harass me, but me personally, I, I give you two, this is when I'm going to give you the ultimatum, okay? I'm either going to tell you, you better stop fucking embarrassing me, or harassing me, rather, because don't embarrass me either, but I'm going to tell you, you either going to stop harassing me, because if you don't, I'm going to fuck you up, or I'm going to get you fucked up, if you're a man, or two... I'm going to call the police on your ass and let the law deal with you. Those are the only two options that I give anybody when there's some shit that pop off like this, okay? Or three, I won't even tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do it. i either going to send the cops to you or I'm going to just ring your doorbell and bust your motherfucking head open or see you in the street and bust your head open. Either way, you know what I'm saying? Because there's only, for me, there's only two ways to solve it. But being that I'm in my 40s now, I'm 42... I would probably more than likely, you know what, I'm going to handle this with the law. Sometimes you may, you know, you might feel like a little bit punkish, like, oh, shit, I'm calling the popo on this motherfucker. She's going to think I'm scared of her. But you know what, it has nothing to do with being scared. It has to do with having all your ducks in a row and everything straightened out so that way you cover your own ass. Ain't nothing like making sure your ass is covered, okay? For real, all right? And if you have to invite the law into the shit, then that's what the fuck you have to do. Bitches like that, they don't get it. They really don't get it. They are the type that they will constantly, constantly run up at the mouth and constantly, constantly harass you and say shit. Now, here's the thing. Bitch, you ain't about to tell my kids that you they mother. That right there might make me come ringing your doorbell. Like, is there an issue and there is the motherfucking problem? Because don't come in between me and my children. Don't disrespect my children don't say no shit to my kids because now you just overstepping like you bitch you done walked on the fucking you done walked the red you 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 like walked on the ocean and some hot coal to come over here on my side of the world to say some dumb shit to me because that's how I feel so <laughs> with her saying some shit like that to the kids I have to, I think you know what if you know this bitch phone number sweetheart 
I would be calling her to fuck up and let her know, listen, sweetheart, you got one more fucking time to open your mouth to my children or to harass me and then you're going to reap the repercussions, okay, that you really don't want. Don't say nothing to me or don't say nothing to my children about me or who you are to them. That bitch ain't your kid's mother. Who the fuck is she? Bitch, y'all was broken up for like how long? Six months? Six, seven months? Go ahead and sit the fuck down. Have a seat, bitch. This is the thing with a lot of females. They fail to realize, stand your place and stay in your motherfucking lane. Don't come over here in this motherfucking lane because, bitch, I might be, this shit might be a little bit too fast for your ass, okay? My, this lane might be too fast for your motherfucking ass. So you may want to stay over there in the slow zone because you never know what the fuck is going to happen to you when you get over here. That's the that's the one thing that I'm I'm happy that I've never had issues with none of my baby fathers or their girlfriends. Uh, maybe it was because of my personality, like they already knew, bitch, don't even try me, okay? Don't even try me. I mean, I've had one issue. Don't let me let me stop lying. I had one issue. Now my ex-husband was well, my daughter Tati's father. He was with this girl, Keisha. She was like the town whore. And I don't mean to say it like that, but that's exactly what she was. Did this nigga cheat on me for her? Ratchet. She had a baby. She had two babies on him while they were married. Like, uh, and they weren't his, okay? And I could go on and on and on. But anyway, he cheated on me with her while I was pregnant with Tati. Whatever. Did he, um, you know, once Tati was born, he came by to pick her up, you know. She was only a few months old. And when he came back to drop her off, he came in a cab. Did he bring that little chicken head bitch with him? I had to tell him, don't you ever bring that girl to my house again, all right? Don't bring her to my fucking house. I let him know. As the years went on, you know, she and I, we became cool or whatever. But then it was that one day she came ringing my doorbell because they moved around the corner from me. I'll never forget. She rang my doorbell without him in the car and said to me, I better stay away from her babe, her husband, okay, because he doesn't want me. Now, first of all, I had a husband, okay? So I don't know where she got that from. Maybe because um, your husband came ringing my doorbell for his kids. So she kind of felt like her husband had feelings for me still, which he did, okay? But who gives a fuck? Don't nobody want to fuck with him, especially if he got a pencil dick, a little toddler dick. Don't nobody want to fuck with him. But anyway, and I already had my own shit going on, so I nobody cared. And he never smelled like he brushed his fucking teeth, like on some real shit. He always had, his breath smelled like he had a man shitting on his tongue constantly, constantly. So, bitch, please, okay? I barely have any eyebrows. I ain't trying to fuck with him and lose all my eyebrows and my fucking hair off my head. No, thank you. But, yeah, she, she came ringing my doorbell and said that shit to me. You know what? I said, hold on, Keisha. Hold on. Did I come back outside with a fucking box cutter and told her, you ever come over here again starting some shit with me? You going to see what time it is. The bitch drove the fuck off in his car, okay? And here he go calling me. What happened? What happened with you and Keisha? Man, please, you better tell that little ratchet bitch to say her ass right the fuck around the corner because she don't know me. She one of these slow town hoes. Bitch, I'm from New York City. Don't fuck with me, all right? I'm older than her, and I've already got all my shit going on for me while she running around sniffing coke fucking niggas and shit. You gonna ring my motherfucking doorbell, bitch? I will pull that fake synthetic ponytail, drawstring ponytail off the top of your goddamn head and strangle your ass with it. Don't fuck with me. So I did have some type of drama, but I stays out of it. So me personally, my opinion, I will call that bitch to fuck up. And if she continues, then that's when I'm going to put in a, not even an order of protection, but I'm going to file some kind of report on her ass harassing me. Let the law deal with it. Because bitches like that, they so scandalous. What she'll do is she'll talk shit about you. And then if you beat her upside her motherfucking dome piece, she going to talk real shit about you. And she going to try to put that shit in your kid's face. Okay. And you will never want to look like a less of a person around your kids ever. You know what I'm saying? So my opinion, let her have it on the phone. Let her know. You ain't even got to let her have it, but let her know. Listen, sweetheart, we not about to do this harassment shit okay you don't have to call her up or if she call you let her have it and your stern voice and if she continues to harass you then by all means have the law involved in it i'm pretty sure he won't like it because then he's gonna look real stupid and not right there that right there might end the whole fucking relationship for them too Okay, but never, never, never lose your ladylike appearance for no fucking ratchets. All right, and I'm just saying that, and I'm sorry to say some females don't like to be called ratchets or whatever, but hey, 
it is what it is. There's a lot of ratchets out there and it is what it is. So, so be it. So on that note, I'm going to go, I'm going to do these wig videos and make sure that this video gets published, which it will, because by the time you watch this, it'll be Wednesday, but let all the young ladies know down below, Felicia, Kimberly, and Melanie, what you think of this situation, give them your opinions and what would you do? And as always, stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Happy holidays. And I'll see you in a soon to come video. Hey.